Welcome back to the channel guys. Well today, a bit of a special video. We are down with Hell Performance near Exeter. We've got Steve, he's going to show us around all of the uh, manufacturing here because I didn't know, but Hell basically manufacture 90, and what, what percentage of stuff do you actually make on site for your kits now? 99.9% 99.9% of the stuff is all made here in the UK. So Steve's going to give us a bit of a tour and the plan is hopefully I'm going to come away with a set of their V2 calipers for the Hypermotard and the rear caliper and touch them, lots of goodies, lots of blingy goodies basically. So uh, what's your role, Steve? What's your... A technical advisor. Technical advisor. So uh, he's going to do a bit of a tour, right through from the base manufacturing right up to the assembly. So this should be quite an interesting video. So Chopsy, roll the intro. What we're going to do now is we're going to make up some lines for the hypermotard. Hell, obviously, do more or less every motorcycle. On the is it every motorcycle on the market? Damn well, more or less, isn't it? The amount, the amount of lines you do. So they do something for the hypermotard, even though it's 15 years old. They still got the full full kit for the hypermotard. So we need the clutch, we need the rear brake, we need the front brake. So we're going to actually make up the lines for my bike. These are the colour choices. <laughs> every colour choice under the sun. Quite quite like the carbon what they call the carbon finish, or I might be just really boring and go black. Banjo choices, look at these. So we've got the order, we've got Danny, who's, who's gonna actually make the lines for us because we're gonna be using the, the Hell calipers front and rear and the master cylinder and the clutch master cylinder. It's slightly different to the standard bike. The standard Brembo's, they come off at a different angle. So we've got to take that into account as well. But, right, uh, I'm sure go. Danny knows what so he's doing. So we've got a nice big specification here yeah. as well, which is good. We've got about three, three and a half thousand motorbike applications. Is there really? So, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And I see there's different options as well, like over the mud guard, you know, yeah, two full lines, full race full yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to so, grab some hose. So we're going to go a black banjos and the stealth line as well, which I think is a bit of, a bit of heat shrink just to make it look really stealthy because we're going full, full black mode. So how do you know how long that is, Danny? Where does it tell you that? So on the database, we've got the actual cut lengths ah, okay. here. Um, and this indicates what type of bend ah, okay. that's needed, gotcha. essentially. Gotcha. Then we're over to the stripping machine, and this is where the, oh, okay. Sits in the groove there, that's our stop. Oh, wow. You don't want to get your finger in there, do you? Yeah, you don't, definitely not. And there you go. So we're going to put the first accessory on, which is the heat shrink logo which are both sides there we go now that that's it So what we'll do now is the alignment here. Yeah. So this is aligned at zero degrees. And we're going to get on the actual get onto the actual swaging of the uh, yeah. of the actual ferrule itself. Perfect little crimp there. And that's one side done. And repeat for the other. Because this is a custom uh, custom brake line here, we actually leave this heat shrink loose just in case you need to realign this fitting. Okay, okay. Um, and the good thing is with our product that you can actually realign this after after it's been crimped. And all you need to do is hold the crimp here, and you can actually put that oh, through, see, so you hold and, that they, and they rotate. Oh, and you can now, oh, right, so you've got a little bit of option to... So, you can do, do it any time you like. You can yeah. even do it, you know, a couple of years after, oh, just really? in case you've made any modifications. Yeah, and it's, okay. it's a special locking mechanism yeah. actually inside of the actual oh, brake wow. line itself. Oh, there Appreciate we go. it, Danny. Thank you very much. So, all these all these stainless fittings, yeah, here, they're all made by those machines down there. Ah, it's okay. Right. So you're make, making absolutely everything. All, all of the fittings are all made in house. Yeah. 
these are the machines that make all the stainless steel. And there's more up the other end as well. <laughs> so yeah. these go 24 seven, they do not. 24 seven? Yeah, they don't, don't, don't shut down at all. So they're just all making different types, yeah, you know, yeah, whether yeah. it be banjos. And that, so that's the stainless steel that gets loaded into yeah. them at, at night. Yeah. The only time a guy has to come in, so he programs these machines, and the only time they, he has to come back in, if you've got a little traffic light system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If there's a red light, he would needs, come in. needs attention. Yeah. And uh, all the scrap goes towards the Christmas party, I guess, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all yeah. these are literally just banjos. Yep. They're not doing any of the caliper milling. This, nope. is, this is just no, banjos. I stuff. And, and the other building, You've got more of these. More of these doing the, the banjos. Exactly Do you the sell the thing. banjos to any other companies or are these just all on your product? Only, uh, uh, only us. Yeah, only so us. only the he yeah, other yeah. health companies. Yeah, I, can't, I can't believe how big the site is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's grown from a shed. But this is, uh, like I say, it's still an ongoing progress here because the, not all the offices have been built, so it is a little bit scabby yeah, down okay. here. Well, that's the guys that do all the program, all the program, oh, programming these machines. Right, yeah. Okay. So it's all the design and programming done by those guys. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of technical guys, but there's your caliper there. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. That is it. Yeah. So Simon got the uh, robots in because again, yeah, they load the billet. That's all completely automated then, yeah. the, the, whole, the whole process. Yeah. yeah, they look nice, don't they? Well, that's the block that will go oh, in. So that, that's that, okay, so that's, that's the raw material. Block, that's, yeah. that's the rear block, which is then the robot lifts that into the machine and, yeah. and that's it, it comes out. Yeah. Caliper, or half a caliper. Because we make, uh, you know, calipers for other companies. Oh, you know, like Langham, yeah, that yeah, bike, yeah. Oh, that's our stuff. Oh, our lines it's like yeah. Norton we supply Norton CCM yeah so I think it's just more bespoke stuff yeah we like to do yeah. rather than like masses even though we do supply um, Yamaha Europe and some of the race stuff do and some of the Triumph Moto yeah. 2 we supply oh do you um, so yeah but something we can still keep control of yeah. but it's like someone can you know come in off the streets you know be it a Harley Davidson or anything like that. And, and quite often we get asked can we put the line through the handlebar? Yeah. It's just, uh, you get a big ape hanger all of a sudden, yeah. some guy, yeah, we can swage it through. Yeah. Yeah, no problems at all, but you know, a lot of other other companies won't do that. No. We, do, we never want to lose that. Yeah. You know, we want that personal. That bespoke personal, personal touch. You know, yeah, like, yeah. But I feel of the weight. I feel yeah, the yeah, weight. Yeah, of course you can, yeah, yeah. It's quite heavy, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. Stand. It's that sort of like aircraft grade. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's, it's heavy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, is this rear calipers? Yeah, that would be the rear. Look at those. Um, I'll get the model from Andy. Right. And then... So you get the model, then you've got to build how the machine's going to build it, basically. Yeah. So, so you get the raw dimensions and everything, I guess, as part of the model, and then yeah. you, you, you see how it's going to be tooled, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Wow. And that's like the sequence, is it? That's the sequence of how it's going to be milled? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Oh, that's fascinating. So that's your new manufacturing plant, yeah. That's doing just the bike stuff at the moment, so just yes. the calipers. Yeah. That's because that's quite a new part of the business, I suppose, isn't it? The, that's been, how long have you been doing the calipers now? A couple of years? Uh, calipers have been about five years, oh, but really, we they? went from the V1 to yeah. the V2. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about the V3 now. Oh, really? Yeah, so we're sort of looking <laughs> into the V3. So. Evolution. That's oh, in the wow, grey. Yeah. That's the grey finish. Yeah. yeah. I do, I love the little sort of cooling. Yeah, yeah. It's very uh, MotoGP that, isn't it? So th these are the ones you've got, but you've, yeah. you've got it in black. Wow. Uh, they do look nice the... in that grey, don't they? Well, you can change it. No, no, no. <laughs> the whole front, it's all black. It's all yeah, completely yeah. black, so it looks so nice with black. Yeah. But uh, how much do they weigh then? Even... It's not too yeah. bad, is well, it? Yeah, yeah look. I mean, oh, oh, you haven't got the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got the pads in there yet, but... No. It's light, isn't it's it? It's all billet. Yeah, it's all. Because you know, that, some people actually say, oh, yeah, but then, then, you know, they're not a monoblock. But if you look at some of the testing, Simon's got the, 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 the actual testing you've done. Yeah. But the actual flex and stuff with, with a monoblock. Oh, if you look at Brembo race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their race starts as a two piece. It's oh, not does a monoblock. Really? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So, you know, when you look at the, the actual strength of this 
compared to a, you know, certain like an, an M50 and stuff, the flex is less on this, yes. even though you've got the boat. Because it's billet, because of yeah. the materials used, basically, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's all down to feel. Because, yeah. you know, like power-wise, you know, we've tested this against, you know, M50s you know, and Stallings and, and yeah. other, but some racers come back and say to us, what we like about yours, the same as the master cylinder, it's the feel. Ah, uh, really, okay. Um, so, you know what it's like when you're on the road, yeah. most of the stuff out there now is so good, yeah. anyway. But on the track, you know, with your experience as well, it's, it's going into a corner, it's a great trailing. Yeah. This is where we've sort of aimed at, is that actual feel so you can just squeeze, so you can, you squeeze, can squeeze. feel exactly before. what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If, so, I guess if it's too rigid, you can lose some of that feel. Well, it's the same as ratios on master cylinders. You know, so most racers will prefer an 18 because you've got that more progressive feel so you can squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Gotcha, yeah. Um, rather than having that, a lot of road riders prefer their firm firm yeah because they think that it's going to be give them more braking yeah actually yeah, it's not okay, really you. you know but it, it's down to personal experience so you know when people ring up and say oh you know what 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 what's what's the best for my braking I'm like, well, what are you looking for yeah so again it comes back to that bespoke yeah. i'd rather speak to somebody and say look you know what what sort of you know are you used to a you know a 1920 brembo if so this will be, this this be, will be similar way. to that, yeah. But our starts is at, at 19, but you've got a little cam inside, so you can either alter it to 18 yeah. or 20. And they go out at 19, and I would say 99.9% .9 of people stick with the 19. Yeah. Because so it's sort of an in-between, yeah. and they're quite happy. Yeah. Bike porn. Bike porn bling. <laughs> we all Bike love porn. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we're all tights at heart, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we can't right. help it. And then you've got the... V ones. It's actually the V ones that are are quite popular because we, we've recently dropped the price um, yeah. of, of the V one. But um, Do you crack a V one open then. Yeah, yeah, sure. Have a look, Steve. So this is the V the V one caliber, which is still still for yeah, sale. But, yeah, still, but yeah. it's just like, This yeah, is what yeah. you call a hundred, so that will be on most European yes. bikes. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit more blockier. Yeah, um, and I think this is why we've upgraded it. But if you've got GSXR. Size and K5, yeah. you know, ZX10 and stuff like yeah. that. That's a good upgrade, especially for the money. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's how much uh, do you want to spend the other day, isn't it? Yes. It's all about your budget, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, your, your standard Taiko and things like so, that. So, what's, what's the cost? Do you know the cost of the. That is 399 Three nine for a billet. Nine. Yeah, for a billet caliper. Um, so. Can't argue with that, can you? Not really, no. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> you think can't so. Can't argue with that. Um, it, lifetime warranty. Yeah. So, if there's a problem. The other good thing about all of our products is we try to make it, you know, because. Brembo's Brembo, yeah, you yeah. know, they, they are the number one. So what we've tried to do is make it so the average guy can service it. Yeah. Where, say for instance, you buy a Brembo master cylinder, it's got to go back to an authorized Brembo dealer. Oh, yeah. So we designed the master cylinder and the calipers. It's because everything's made in-house, including the stainless steel pistons. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you give me a call, I ship it out to you the next day. Yeah. So you're back on the track or you're back on the road. Yeah. There isn't a thing inside that isn't made here. Really, so 100% is made. Apart, apart from the little apart rubber from bit. Apart from the little rubber bit. <laughs> little rubber <laughs> bit. <laughs> but yeah, even this, I'll show you in a minute, this is hand painted. Is it really? Yeah, because we found the machine we bought wasn't as efficient as Rob and it didn't stay on as long, but <laughs> he actually does that. And hand painted. Hand painted. Hand finished. Yeah. Hand finished. Oh, so, so this is where they're painted. This is where the painting happened. This? Look at these. Where is it? Where has he put it? Ah, oh, there's the master cylinder. Where is Adam? Yeah, John. Oh, they're the rear, the rear calipers, aren't they? Does it with that? That's it. That's, yeah. that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is incredible. That's hand painted. Yeah. So that's the that's dual, the dual, uh, the, yeah. the dual masters. Yeah. And they're all dual masters, yeah. aren't they? And they're little levers for the. Um, oh, the yeah. oh, thumb brake. So the thumb brake. That's the hundred. Yeah. So we just, you know, some people just need that extra length. Yeah. Little short yeah. thumbs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's the standard seventy mil, and that's the hundred. Nice. Um, and then more of the dual stuff there. All the pool they do look nice in just the. Is that a well, we don't. Is it... That is nickel, but we stopped doing it because the process is so expensive. Is it? Uh, but Langham, we still make oh, it for them. Oh, so they want a nickel plate. Yeah, it does look nice in nickel plate. <laughs> <laughs> it does look nice. Yeah.
That's it. So oh, that's the adjusters. adjusters. The yeah. And that's all made in-house? All, all, Every, all, all of, of these products here. are made in-house, yeah. What I'm trying to get over, John, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sort of big the company up, it, 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 we're all pretty passionate, and he is as well. Yeah. Because he's a businessman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and isn't it? But that's, that's the difference, isn't it? He, yeah. st he started this business in his it's shed. It's his baby. In his shed. It's his baby. Yeah. You know, he... he he loves it. He's involved. So he's driving the forklift. You know, he's, well, he's doing everything. You know, yeah. trust me. Sometimes I'm sort of like, you know, well, maybe, maybe, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. We're going to do it this way. So yeah, yeah it's definitely his baby. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. you, you won't tell him. No, you won't <laughs> tell him any different. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so we're here with Simon, Simon Lane, who is the. Well, you're, you're the man. You, you are Mr. Hell, are Mr. You? Hell himself. Mr. Yeah, Hell himself. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, showing me your horns. <laughs> How long's Hell been running? Because I've, I've been biking since I was 16, and I can always remember Hell almost being there throughout that whole time. You, you've got a long history, haven't you? It seems to have been. We were talking about this the other day, and it was back in 1997 that it started, but 99 when we got yeah. into brake hoses for motorbikes. So it's been an awful lot, more than half my life has been yeah. spent here, and um, just built it up gradually to what we are today. And where did it all start? Was it sort of more of a sort of just a home industry in your back of your garden? And no, it wasn't. I mean, my father had a um, hydraulics business. He was doing tractors and trailers, big stuff, big hydraulic stuff. Um, he wanted to expand and bought another company. And that didn't work out for him because all the people at that company just wanted to go to the other one. He had everything. He had the stock, etc. So that one just sat there, really. I wanted to get into hydraulics, but I didn't really want to work with my dad. I think he'd either kill me or I'd kill him, one or the other. It was one of those things. Yeah. But I loved motorbikes. I've always loved bikes since a kid. I've just always thoroughly enjoyed two wheels. So since 16, I've been riding around on motorbikes. I wanted to do the, the, the hydraulic brake lines for motorbikes. Had the opportunity, went for it, and we just built on it and built on it. I think we were lucky because we did things first. So when we started all that time ago, we started out with a swaged fitting. So it was really important for us for safety and the security of the product yeah. um, that we actually swaged the end on. So coming from hydraulics where all the ends were always swaged on, right, they yeah. weren't reusable, you couldn't undo them with a pair of spanners. Oh. It was always that they were swaged on, crimped on. And we were told by someone else that we'd last six months. Yeah. And then whatever That's, years so later, we were the first still ones here. to actually do swaged, swaged on. brake lines on, on and, bikes. Uh, yeah, and in the MOT it was always said that the end fittings must be permanently attached. But for brake hoses, and I don't know why, the MOT almost didn't really worry about it with these yeah. reusable fittings. But I knew the safety and security was paramount to our product, and it enabled us to do something else which no one else did. So when it's swaged, our fitting has three little O-ring grooves inside, so you can actually rotate them. Yeah, now, we, we saw that. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So you can, yeah, you can. Real yeah. clever. So you can yeah. just, you know, just fine tune it a couple of degrees just so it really sits nicely on your bike. But it was something else that that gave us the opportunity to do. Um, like I said, everyone else thought we were mad. It would never work. It would never take off. All these years later, they're doing exactly the same things as us. Everyone swages them on. Everyone crimps them on. It is secure. It is safe. It is streamlined. It is um, sleek. It's the way to do it, and yeah. we've been proved time and time again that that was the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah, oh, fantastic. Where did it come from, Hell? Where, where's the, the, the Dragon Tower? Has it got any significance well, the it, logo and it, stuff? It, it, it has, really. It was um, the company that was bought was called Hose Equip. And then when it was bought, we made it a limited company, so it became HEL. Right. But it was Hose Equip Limited. Oh, and when man. we sat down and thought about it, we thought, no one's ever going to buy Hose Equip Limited brake hoses, <laughs> as long as, you know. Um, so we just thought, H-E-L, it works. It's only one L, so it's not that naughty. We're not really bad. Yeah. And the logo, I, we were down in Totnes at the time, and there was a, um, a sticker, like a transfer shop opposite us that did vans and things like that, graphics. And um, one lunchtime, we said to one of the young lads that worked there, he said, look, I drew with paintbrush, which is my favourite thing to draw anything on. It's terrible, but it's all square. So I had a square box with H-E-L in it in black, took yeah. it over there and went, we need some stickers done. Can you do this yeah. for us? And about 15, 20 minutes later, this lad wanders back across going, oh, I've done this. And Chris and I looked at it. Chris has um, been here since the start. Looked at him and went, that is genius. And it was that. And he said, I've done it in red, uh, you know, red and white, because red's for passion and yeah, it's yeah. Um, danger and it's exciting. I've done the oval um, because it's nicer than a, an oblong or a square. I've made it in this special font and I've put this little devil's tail on it and we're looking at it thinking, oh my God, That's that is genius. Perfect, yeah. That is brilliant. It's short, it's small, it's neat, it's clean, it's seen everywhere. Um, so how much do I owe you for that, mate? That is just brilliant. 15 quid. Really, really, so that's yeah. what I paid 15 pounds for that logo and it's 
MotoGP, World Superbike, British Touring Cars, British Superbikes, Isle of Man TT, Northwest 200. It's seen everywhere, this little logo. And it did us some real good. Has the guy um, been back to say, I want more than 15 quid now? He's <laughs> never been back. I don't know what happened to him. He, um, I think he was away with the fairies the day that he came over to see us. He was like, oh, yeah, 15 quid, man. He looked like he'd, uh, he'd been enjoying himself all morning, to be honest. But yeah, 15 pound, a job's a dream. It, job's a good one. It just worked, worked yeah, for us. Yeah. Now I've been uh, I've been here all, all morning looking around, pool table. It, it's such a getting a really family sort of vibe from the place, family working atmosphere. Is yeah. that something that's been important to you to keep that that it, sort of vibe of the place? We didn't really ever set out to do it. We've never been corporate. We're in jeans and t-shirts. Yeah. We want to be um, comfortable. Um, we're passionate about what we do, but I don't believe that you need to be in a suit and a yeah, tie no, no, just yeah. to pretend that you're professional or. You can come and see for yourself. We have open door policy. Anyone can come in and look at the machines. We don't close anything off. You can't go through there. No, that's secret. You can come and see yeah. pretty much the only place in Devon, I think, where actually your fittings are being made and they're being put on a brake hose and they're being swaged on and you can take them away. Yeah. And there's nothing hidden. We make everything for ourselves. Everything is made, all um, mainline stainless steel fittings are all made here. So you've probably seen all yeah, the, the star the machines. Control, keep yeah. on investing, keep on getting new things in. Milling department, the same, all the aluminium stuff, calipers, master cylinders, finger brakes, thumb brakes, all things that we think we can make nicer, better, cleaner, um, something that we've got an interest in, so it's the braking side of things. Um, we'll do all of that in-house. Yeah. A lot of people still don't believe it. They just think that they're going to come here and see hundreds of thousands of Chinese boxes scattered everywhere that's been brought in. But it's a stainless steel bar that I can trace back to Europe. So there's a Spanish mill we buy from, from a British company. That comes down to us here, it's put on the machines, the fittings are manufactured, and they're sent out all over the world every day. Yeah, fantastic, absolutely good. brilliant. Appreciate it, thanks so much for your time. Absolute pleasure, thanks for coming down, and it was good to meet you. And you, brilliant, thanks Thank so you. much. The reels, the little wooden reels, yeah. quite often we take that down free of charge, so the kids use them, ah, okay. and so in the playground, so yeah, they're actually just as, taking a load now, and that's so it's school just here. up the road. Yeah, oh wow, and, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's, so it's, that's, it's yeah, quite, that's really nice. What the big like wheel drums out there? I can yes. see with the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they get stacked up and, and taken um, down to yeah, quite often some of the um, some of the zoos, oh, the animals right, as well. Okay, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but the kids loved them. Yeah, yeah, oh, fantastic. Working hard, chaps. Working hard. Yes. Or is it hardly working? <laughs> <laughs> it is lunchtime. It is lunchtime. I don't know if he's got some. We are now getting into the mountain bikes. Oh, that's another We've massive market, isn't it? We've made a caliper, isn't it? calipers, and masters in it already for that. But oh, really? For masters? Yeah, they've, they've been they've just been tested in Exeter University. Right. But I don't know if they're. No, they're not there. Not here. I think everyone's on lunch now. But um, yeah, these two guys in here. Um, they do that, but I will be able to find them. Yeah, even, even yeah. show you. Well, so, like I say, it might be interesting. New side more. of the business. So Adam's going to uh, put my caliper together here. So uh, is this this is this your? Is you just a caliper man, and Adam, or you uh, you've got other roles as well? Everything gets put together here. I kind of tend to have a hand in. This is it. Yeah. So go on in. Let's see the master, the master in action. So what's that grease you're putting putting in there? Uh, it's a, a special grease for brake components. It's dot resistant. Um, the only thing it's not resistant to is um, mineral oil. Ah, uh, okay. Get a bit of grease around that. Are there dust seals or is there not no dust seals in them? The only time the only time we wouldn't use dust seals is on the on yours if you said it was for racing and the dust seals would be left out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Bit of lock tight in there just to seal them in as well. Yeah. So what's this do then? This is pressing. They just hold the caliper. So that then, oh, so you, while you're talking, when about I talk it up, it, it doesn't yeah, damage sure. the yeah. device, doesn't damage the caliper. Gotcha. So then, always check that it's still on 30. The next thing is a couple of pins in. There we go. Gorgeous. So look at this. This is uh, this is what we've been in. I made up today for the hyper rear caliper. Look at that! Oh, gorgeous! I love the uh, I love the venting. 
on, on the V2 it calipers looks... is so very MotoGP, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, that is absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you very much, Steve. You're, You're welcome. welcome appreciate the tour. Nice to see you. I had no idea you guys were as big as this you're making everything in the uk i'm so i'm so glad i came because it's been really really interesting yeah. and hopefully you guys have found it interesting as well because i always like to support uk manufacturing and uk products where possible and i can't wait to try these out so there's going to be a fitting video where we actually fit these to the bike and then later on of course what's important i guess the real world real world testing and i'll give you some feedback on actually how how they performed but yeah. uh it'll be interesting how you go with it yeah, yeah it'll be nice yeah. I'm really impressed so far. So, uh, yeah, thanks That's again, great. Steve. No, and, uh, thanks very much. Nice to meet you anyway. Thank you. So, if you've enjoyed the video, thank you very much. Please give us a like or subscribe if you're not already. And if you're not aware, I've actually got this Ducati which I'm assembling, and that's what all these parts are going on. So, if you're interested in a bit of classic Ducati garage tinkering, then uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. <laughs>